Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Uh, we are looking at Proverbs chapter 5. This is kind of the third devotional in a little four devotional series that covers the whole chapter. And the chapter is dealing with uh, temptation, particularly sexual temptation and sexual sin. But in this passage, things get a little heated up. Uh, this is a passage, sometimes you have you know, Bible G and Bible PG, if you don't know the movie ratings, but this would be Bible R. This is kind of steamy stuff here. You may not pick it up right away, but this language in this passage is very sensual. And so I'll try to read it, read it in a way to capture that, but catch the imagery. The imagery is talking about sexual intimacy between a man and a woman or the trouble with breaking out of those boundaries that God has given in that covenant of marriage. And so listen to these words from Proverbs chapter 5, beginning in verse 15. Drink water from your own cistern. I can translate that. Have romantic connection with your spouse. That's what it's talking about. Drink water from your own cistern, running water for your, from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public square, should your sexual expression just be out there in the world, out there in your community. But let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed. May you rejoice in the wife of your youth a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breasts satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? And there's a lot in here, and, and this gets real specific about the importance of how we express ourselves as sexual people, made in the image of God, made as men and women, made to be sexual beings, but there's boundaries for that, the covenant of marriage and the relationship of a man and a woman. And so that comes alive in this passage. So a few insights. First, just recognize that what's happening in the picture of water in this passage is a picture of sexual intimacy. So it says, don't let your springs flow everywhere. You know, our culture says anything goes. Promiscuity is fine. But there's a warning here that, that, that your sexual intimacy and expression shouldn't be flowing out open in the streets anywhere you go, but reserved for a very specific place. May they be yours alone. May that expression of sexual intimacy be between the man and a woman who stood before God and family and friends and made that covenant relationship. And within that, within that context, it's a good gift. So then there's a sense of enjoyment and delight. Verses 18 and 19. May your fountain be blessed. May you rejoice in the wife of your youth. This is, this is a celebration of married sex, of married intimacy of the gift that God has given. And in that context, may you be blessed. May you enjoy it. May, may your fountain be blessed. May you rejoice. May you enjoy each other's bodies. It's, I won't get any more graphic than that, but it's, the picture is a beautiful picture of the good gift of our sexuality. And then there's a final warning. You know, be careful. Uh, be, do, why my son be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? And yet again, that, that temptation is there. There's that enticement to enjoy whatever we want to enjoy. But God says a good life, a full life, is a life lived within His boundaries given by His Word. And God's Word does not steal joy. God's truth gives joy when we understand what it means and when we live it out. And so let's pray together. Lord Jesus, our prayer is that, that we would recognize the biblical vision for sexual intimacy, a man and a woman in the covenant of marriage. And God, you celebrate this. You rejoice in this. May we rejoice in it also. For those who have fallen uh, into, the, into the trap of crossing those lines. I pray that you'd help them to repent and to turn from that and to go back to their spouse and be, be restored and as best they can, make that relationship positive and good. And for those who, who are married and love their spouse, I pray that they would honor you by having a great, wonderful, beautiful uh, sexual intimacy that blesses them and that brings you glory. We pray this in your name, amen. Well, blessings on you. Have a great day. If you're part of a church, go to your church this weekend. Be part of that community of faith. Pray there, give there, support there, serve there, worship there. If you're part of Shoreline, do the same. 9 o'clock, 11 on Sunday mornings. Have a great day.